Hey Rovers, the next few videos are going to take us from concept to reality for the Wave Rover 650 hatch. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover story. So today is April 6, 2023. We are, let's see, 92 days away from the launch of Wave Rover. And there's a lot that still needs to be done. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, it's also three days before my birthday. And I'd just like to thank everybody who contributed to my camera uh, contribution fund. Uh, this is the camera. It arrived yesterday. Hard to believe this cost $700, but uh, you know, that's the price. I will be using that to record the rest of the build and also, of course, the voyage because it's, a, it's an action camera. It's waterproof and dustproof. Uh, if you'd, it, there's still three days before my birthday. If you'd like to contribute to the camera fund, there is a link in the video description. I would like at this point to thank everybody who has contributed. Uh, that was very nice and much appreciated, I might say. Uh, on, a, on another sort of uh, housekeeping note, there are only three spots left on the benefactors bulkhead after those three spots are filled i'll be shutting down that fundraiser because uh, that's what we had said we wanted 100 names to be written on the bulkhead inside wave rover and those names are going to travel with me on the circumnavigation which is coming up very quickly so a lot of you are saying alan why did you take all that time and effort to build a hatch why not buy one? Well, I have four things to say about that. Number one, when you go to look at a hatch, they come in set sizes. So the manufacturer has more or less decided for you the size of the hatch. Whereas me, I've decided the size. You know, I've, I've made it whatever size is comfortable, custom built for me, and then just made it a little bit bigger. So custom made. That's number one. I can, I can build whatever I want. Number two, I have never had, well, let's be honest. I, I built my own boats with the exception of the Contessa, which I sailed across the Atlantic uh, in season one of, of this video, of this channel. And uh, I have to say that the hatch didn't leak, although water did come in through the hatch, but that was operator error, not shutting the hatch. Um, so the, the hatch, when it was closed and we were in rough seas, didn't leak at all, not one drop. Uh, what did leak was the forward hatch and the forward hatch, if enough water came on it, it worked through, um, you know, I guess the, the seals of the hatch and it was the same with the opening ports that I had port and starboard. They leak. Point of the story is I have never had a manufactured opening hatch or port light that hasn't leaked. In fact, uh, when I looked at the Lumar hatch for this, approximately the, the same size, this brings us to point number three, the cost, and the uh, hatch that would be this size came in at, I think, $1,800, uh, not including tax, uh, which is about uh, almost 20 times the price it will cost me to build the hatch for this boat. So uh, price, and, and here's the kicker, that that hatch that I just told you about, you know, a fairly pricey piece of equipment, uh, that hatch has a warranty of one year on the seals. That's where it's going to leak, on the seals. So they only have a warranty of one year, whereas this hatch is so simple it's so easy to make watertight you'll see that in the upcoming videos um, and you know as far as I'm concerned it has a lifetime warranty well it, it's like a voyage in itself you know the destination is to have this built and the voyage is building this and it's so worthwhile once you get stuck into it and you 
you become a creator, you know, from idea and concept in your head to executing and building something that is practical and, and really, you know, dare I say beautiful, uh, that, is, that is one of the priceless things that you will get out of a project. And it doesn't have to be a boat. It can be anything. It can be a house. It can be building a bicycle or building a homestead. It's what really separates us from the vast majority of people who don't do an undertaking such as a boat or whatever, whatever your passion is. Now, let's go back in time and see how this whole Wave Rover hatch and housing got underway. The opening for the hatch has been cut. It's, uh, as far as the height goes, I've got it about three quarters of an inch lower than it needs, and I'll put a precise cut on that once I've got the hatch unit built. But when I cut the opening, I had this piece of wood left over, and I just want to break this, and we'll take a look where it uh, where it breaks I mean bear in mind there's not a lot holding this on this is just a tiny little bit of the fillet and it's only on one side there's nothing on the other side so I'll just hand the camera over to Mrs. Rover okay so this won't be too difficult to break uh, let's see we'll just go like this Okay, so it broke, and let's just examine what's happened here. So the plywood broke, not the glue. The glue is all intact, and that uh, layer of plywood is what is ripped off. Now, I wouldn't have been able to do that if there were a fillet on the far side, or in the case of our actual construction, there won't be a fillet on this side. This will be rounded over. This will get glass that will cover three inches either side of the joint. And the same on the leading edge, there will be glass that will cover three inches either side. So this is going to be uh, you know, quite a strong joint. But as always, it's not the glue that breaks, it's the wood that fails. Planning is absolutely crucial in any project. And these are some of the things that I'll be needing over the next two or three days. And you've got to be thinking ahead all the time because, you know, I just can't afford any downtime. Today marks exactly four months until launch. And, you know, we just barely got the boat closed in last weekend. So this is the hatch and some of the wings on the side of the hatch. But I have to do fillets right away. And then I'll be using some of that glue for the hatch it's uh, it's it's really a bit of a puzzle, and usually in the evening I set out a pretty precise schedule for what I plan to do the following day. So I'm just getting ready to uh, build the hatch, or at least the the combing or the structure that the hatch will close on. But before I do that, I've decided that I want to have these little wings right here. There's one on each side. And they're going to serve two purposes. One is they give extra structure to the, to the whole uh, after bulkhead, which is great, just really toughens it up. And then the second thing these will do is I'm going to cut little hand holes into these, and that'll give a really nice structure to hang on to. And then the third purpose, yes, there are three purposes that these serve, actually four when I think about it. The third purpose will be right about here, I'm going to put a hole and then across here will be a pipe. And that pipe will be something for me to swing on as I come in through this hatch. And then of course the fourth uh, reason that I wanted these, they add that extra protection so that if the hatch is open and say uh, the odd little bit of spray or something comes into the boat, um, this will just give this little area uh, just behind here where I'll have some electrics, it'll give it more protection. So uh, the little project I'm going to work on right now is to put some hand holes into these. Oh, and they're not done. W when they're done, and you'll be seeing this later on, we'll be putting a round over along this edge and then fiberglassing that. Uh, for this portion up here, it's a fillet. And then for this portion over here, there's another fillet. And then, of course, the whole thing, 
has been laminated into this longitudinal bulkhead. And in the initial plan, that longitudinal bulkhead actually terminated right here. But I had anticipated this right back at the building stage. It's something I wanted to do. And uh, that's why I ran it that extra length so that I would have some sort of structure to build these wings onto. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get those hand holes done. So this is where I want to put the hand hold. So I want this to be the top. Just going to measure down four inches because that'll, that's consistent with what I've been doing for the other hand holes. Just line it up. Four inches is trying to stay out of the camera here. Okay, right there. The bin I'm using is an inch and an eighth in diameter. So half of an inch and an eighth is half an inch and a sixteenth. Or another way of saying that is it is nine sixteenths. So right here, that would be the center of our radius. And now down here, I'll do the same thing. So now I have two points to put my drill bit. Right here and here. How the hell did we lose it? Oh, here it is. Okay. See, that's me. I put something down and then I'll search for everywhere for it and then find it right beside where I had it. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of backing protection like we usually do on the clamp. And let's see. There we go. And if I look a little awkward, it's because I'm trying not to get in the way of the uh, camera. Which I, I don't think I'm be really that successful doing. Okay, so now I've got some backing support. I'm going to put my hearing protection on. And make the drill holes. So, right about there. There we go, we're through. So now I just want to give myself a line so we can cut this out. So let's see, I'll just use a little piece of wood. There we go. And the reason I like to use a piece of wood as opposed to a metal framing square, a piece of wood doesn't slide around on you when you place it on the wood. So now I've got two parallel lines that intersect with velvet run tangent to the circle. So I'll just use a jigsaw. Yeah, it's just that easy. So we've got Bill England here from Ambler Odysseys. And he's just cleaning up this, uh, this hole before I take the router to it. Okay, so now that we've got the hole cut out and Bill off camera he's uh, filed out any any little bits that needed to be straightened so we, we have ourselves a pretty good oval I can take the the router with the roundover bit on it it's a 3 8 roundover and I'll just uh, run it over there So what, what we're looking at, we have a little bit that needs to be sanded out just in this corner. Uh, but apart from that, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. Well, this is largely what the hatch will look like from the inside. You can see there's plenty of room. And 
I deliberately made it wider than the opening, and the reason is I plan to have some little uh, storage spaces here for things like the binoculars and maybe handheld VHF, same on this side. And uh, there's still a bit of uh, still a bit of finishing to do. That'll of course be another video. I'll be doing a round over here. We'll be doing a fillet between here. We'll be glassing that whole affair. And also along here, the handholds, we'll be glassing, uh, doing a round over and glassing that. And then of course at the top here, we'll be turning this into a really nice radius and fiberglassing that. So yeah, a bit of work. And of course the combing has to go on the hatch itself. Uh, yeah, a bit of work to do. Uh, it all takes time. <laughs> There's only one solution and that's to crack on with it. So next week we'll carry on with the hatch housing and combing. Uh, Rovers, as always, thanks for watching and remember, forge your own adventure. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>